Tomorrow on the Oprah Winfrey. You're watching Channel 7, Eyewitness News. And Heidi Tong, Corey McFerrin with sports, Storm Field with weather, and the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. Good evening, I'm Cotty Tong. Here's what's happening. A third straight day of sweltering temperatures had people trying to stay cool any way they could. But going shirtless or sucking on a popsicle hardly did the trick as temperatures soared into the 90s. We hit 96 degrees here in the city, three degrees short of the record set back in 1956. However, Newark tied the 99 degree record set in 56. No major problems reported today by power companies in our area as air conditioners shifted into high gear. However, there are other problems. Specifically, water pressure problems on Staten Island, as David Navarro now reports. When firefighters of Engine Company 160 in Staten Island checked the water pressure in front of their station house tonight, they liked what they saw. 55 pounds. Which is good. But their concerns of a potential water pressure problem because of the current hot spell were confirmed when they checked a hydrant in the hilly section of the borough. About, about 32, 33. That's, that's, that's very low not enough pressure. Firefighters in Staten Island are under a phase one alert as the demand for water rises with the temperature. The island is at the end of the New York City water system, so pressure is already low. And with increased numbers of residents watering lawns and filling pools up, many people are finding themselves left with little or no pressure at all. Yesterday and today, the water pressure was extremely low. Um, the faucets, I could hardly get any water out. Firefighters can work with as little as 10 pounds of pressure per inch, but this heat snap still has them concerned. What we do in a phase one is check the hydrant in front of quarters from 1800 to 2200 hours, 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock, once an hour, to make sure pressures are up to, uh, to what we need. Staten Island fire officials believe the water pressure problem on the borough is still far from being life-threatening. But they're asking residents, nonetheless, to conserve water for the duration of this hot spell before the situation becomes any worse. Reporting in Staten Island, David Navarro, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And will the situation get any better tomorrow? Sam Champion will join us a little bit later on with the latest forecast. Trouble tonight at Jones Beach. A farming day Long Island pilot is in critical condition after crash landing his plane on the beach. Police say 55-year-old Edward Valarella suffered severe internal injuries when he made a forced landing at West Beach 1 around 7.30 tonight. The plane ended up nose deep in the sand, trapping the pilot in the cockpit. It took rescue workers an hour to cut him free from the twisted fuselage. He was taken to Nassau County Medical Center. It is not known what forced that plane landing, but officials speculate Valorella may have been headed for a Republic airfield in Farmingdale. On Long Island tonight, the concern is not so much about heat as it is about health. Here's why. Another youngster is sick tonight with what doctors suspect is tuberculosis. He is the second Nassau County teenager stricken in just over two weeks. Kathy Wolf has the latest. The test for tuberculosis. It's quick and painless, and that's good news for about 500 Nassau County students. At the Centennial School in Roosevelt, a 12-year-old boy has contracted the disease. The county will test all the students since tuberculosis is contagious. If they were playing, laughing, running, uh, um, sharing stories together, there may be some risk of getting uh, tuberculosis in that situation. The kids in the back of the room, away from this child, probably very uh, minimal risk. In the early 1900s, it was called the White Plague and was considered a death sentence. People who contracted it nearly always died. The disease destroys lung tissue. But in 1952, the antibiotic cure was discovered. Tuberculosis is not the killer it used to be. To put uh, the record straight, tuberculosis is an easily treatable illness in this day and age. And particularly for kids, they tolerate the drugs very well and the success rate is very high. The county plans to begin testing children at this school by the end of the week, but they want parents to rest assured. Chances are any child who tests positive for tuberculosis can be cured with antibiotics within six months. In Nassau County, Kathy Wolf, Channel 7, Eyewitness News.
The deaths of a woman and her three young children in the Bronx tonight is attributed to carbon monoxide poisoning. A police investigation of the basement apartment of Yvonne Richards and her children indicates a blocked flue on a newly installed water heater may have caused the accident. Police also say the apartment had only two windows and both were closed, allowing the deadly odorless gas to build up. And the nation's first law to protect those who work at video display terminals is on the books tonight in Suffolk County. According to the controversial law, private businesses with more than 20 terminals will have to pay 80% of the annual cost of eye exams and glasses for VDT operators. The law also provides for a 15-minute break after each three hours of work. The Suffolk legislature overrode the veto of County Executive Patrick Halpin, who fears the law will drive business away from Suffolk County. And the Yonkers fight over housing desegregation flared up again tonight, just a day after the Supreme Court said Yonkers must build low-income housing in white neighborhoods, and just a day after the mayor said Yonkers would obey, reporter Jim Dolan found this reaction tonight at Yonkers City Hall. They're used to it now in Yonkers City Council chambers. This is what passes these days for decorum. And it could have been worse. More folks wanted inside council chambers, but they wouldn't fit and were turned away at the door. We want it! We want it! To be sure, the public housing plan in Yonkers has made the city a hotbed of political unrest, and the council will probably be glad if they are removed in the next election. For now, a Supreme Court decision that puts into motion construction of the controversial housing isn't stopping the opposition. What we hope to do is to, to just change the remedy and uh, not not have this uh, heinous act be put upon the citizens of this people, of this country. Opponents of the housing plan continue to maintain tonight that their opposition is based not on race, but on economics. And in fact, they say that if the plan is implemented, it will not strengthen black power in the city, but dilute it. I find that this is what blacks need in America, political and economic power, not living next to someone uh, who, so who's middle class and they're poor. Opponents say that conditions they see now at current Yonkers housing projects, where thousands of poor people are warehoused in a confined setting, would spread to the new public housing as well, and then spread to the neighborhoods. See this? So what's this blood? Look at the crack bottles. Opposition is not based, they say, on the race of those who must endure these conditions. Though the new housing plan is designed to end the warehousing and many of the problems that go with it, it has clearly not ended the controversy. But the new plan is designed to end this kind of warehousing and the problems that go with it. Still, some are skeptical, but it's hard to imagine people living under the new plan in any worse conditions than the way they are living now. In Yonkers, Jim Dolan, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And a big change on the way at the White House. Chief of Staff Howard Baker has resigned effective July 1st. The primary reason that he gave for quitting? The health of his wife, who has chronic back problems. Baker took the job as White House Chief of Staff in February of 1987, replacing Donald Reagan at the height of the Iran-Contra arms scandal. Baker is credited with restoring stability at a time of crisis. We're going to miss him, of course. He has served very well, but he had his reasons for what he's had to do. Baker will be replaced by Deputy Kenneth Duberstein, a veteran of more than 20 years of Washington's legislative wars. Duberstein uh, first served in Washington on the staff of the late New York Senator Jacob Javits. Howard Baker says that he plans to return to his law practice in Tennessee, which he served as U.S. Senator. Michael Dukakis wants to scrap Star Wars and update more down-to-earth conventional weaponry to help defend Europe against a Soviet attack. In a major foreign policy speech at the State Department, the apparent Democratic presidential nominee declared a strong commitment to NATO and outlined a plan for reducing the risk of war in Europe. We need a defense strategy that will set sensible priorities, a strategy that will put our resources where they will make a difference, a strategy that will help to reduce the risk of nuclear war by reducing the risk of conventional war. Dukakis also told the Atlantic Council, a pro-NATO group, that he opposes continued funding for MX and Midget Man missiles, saying the U.S. needs to develop a weapon to stop Soviet tanks instead. Still coming up, repercussions from yesterday's verdict finding. Cigarette companies partly responsible for the death of a New Jersey woman. We'll have a full report. Also, Governor Cuomo speaks out against Tawana Brawley's mother, who's seeking asylum from arrest. It's been 
said that form should always follow function. But on rare occasions, the function is already so highly advanced that the form is free to pursue absolute beauty. Introducing the Mercedes-Benz 300 CE Coupe. Getting the story straight, that's what they pay me for. Yet banks keep showing me ads with the happy tellers and short lines. And hey, come on, just give me what I need. Like a little interest on my checking account? Or a low mortgage and home equity loan rates so I can uh, improve that little mansion of mine. I'd also like a discount brokerage service. Save a few bucks when I invest. And give me things like that. Because unless you're handing out free money, pal, that's the only reason I'll like a bank. Imagine stepping into life 200 years ago in colonial Williamsburg. A living, breathing, working town. A town waiting to be discovered, experienced, explored. Another way of life is waiting for you. See it. Live it. For information, call 1-800-HISTORY and come to Colonial Williamsburg. Get ready for something you've never tasted before. New Fresh and Natural Brand Premium Pasteurized Orange Juice. Fresh and Natural. Luscious new name. New Fresh and Natural. The difference is plain. Not from concentrated fresh squeeze taste it. Mm. New Fresh and Natural. Come on and taste it. Come on and taste it. New Fresh and Natural. All premium. New Fresh and Natural. Not from concentrate. New Fresh and Natural Orange Juice. The name says it all. Tomorrow at 9 of the morning, show the Reverend Al Sharpton gives us an update on the Tawana Brawley case. Plus, the Cosby Show's Theo, Malcolm Jamal, Warner. And entertaining expert Martha Stewart at 9. Another ruling in a smoker's suit against tobacco companies. A federal appeals court in Ohio said that a man who lost a leg to vascular disease linked to smoking can't collect damages. And that is the opposite of the verdict yesterday by a federal court jury in Newark. It found a cigarette company contributed to the death of a New Jersey woman, and they awarded $400,000 in damages. More on the repercussions of the verdict from Lewis Young, who covered the trial. People go on puffing tonight, and tobacco companies want to make sure they continue to do so, untroubled by yesterday's jury award to the widower of a New Jersey cancer victim. Antonio Cipollone won $400,000 from a Newark federal jury. The money to come from Liggett and Myers, the company that made the cigarettes his wife smoked when she first lit up back in the 40s. Liggett and Myers, the company that soothed consumer fears with advertisements like this one. It means that everything from auto tires to ice cream, battleship steel to cigarettes, can be made better and safer for you. Only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Best for you. At a Midtown news conference today, attorneys for Liggett and Myers and two other tobacco firms attacked the motives of people who brought the suit. The real story of this litigation is not of a woman from New Jersey who smoked, but about money. Money. At another news conference in Short Hills, New Jersey, the lawyers who handled the Cipollone case and Antonio Cipollone himself said it wasn't just money they were after, and they say more suits will be filed. This case will be the first in a number of successful lawsuits, and with more and more success in the, in the courts, you will find more cases being filed. I did it because she wanted to do it, and, uh, I, and she told me to do it all the way to the end. And that's what I did. Liggett and Myers, meanwhile, is appealing yesterday's ruling. The tobacco company's position is clear. Individuals who make informed choices have to take the responsibility for those choices. So the cigarette makers are saying they sell the product only because so many people want them. They make no guarantees. The warning's right on the pack. And if you smoke and get sick, they don't want to hear about it. It's the stuff lawsuits are made of. In Short Hills, New Jersey, Lewis Young, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Startling testimony on the books tonight in the second Howard Beach trial. On the stand, prosecution witness Curtis Sylvester, cousin of Michael Griffith, the black man killed during a racial attack by a gang of whites. Sylvester testified that a passing patrol car turned them down when they asked for a ride to get help for their car, which broke down in a Queens neighborhood. Sylvester said the last time he saw Griffith alive was when Griffith and two other men went to look for a tow truck. One defendant faces a charge of attempted murder. The others face riot charges in that attack a year and a half ago. Three other teens were convicted of manslaughter and assault in the first trial. Strong words from Governor Cuomo tonight about the Brawley case. The governor wants the contempt of court citation against Mrs. Glenda Brawley enforced. 
That means arrest and 30 days in jail for refusing to answer a subpoena to testify in her daughter's case. The governor fired off a letter to Attorney General Robert Abrams, saying the law must be respected. Mrs. Brawley is in a Brooklyn church. The governor also said a prosecutor and state trooper accused by the Brawley's lawyers of raping Tawana Brawley also have become victims in this case. Mubarak Awad, the Arab-American advocate of nonviolence who was kicked out of Israel, is saying tonight that he'll do all that he can to get back into that country. Awad claims he was deported because he is a Christian and a PLO supporter. The Israelis say that he was a threat to their security and had to go because his U.S. visa had expired. My challenge was and is to the Israelis as well as to the Palestinians that through civil disobedience that we will get our independent state of Palestine. Supporting the PLO does not contradict with nonviolence. He is an American citizen and he came to Israel as a tourist. So it's within our rights not to prolong a tourist visa. Since the Israeli riots began in December 21, Arabs have been expelled. Awad's deportation was protested by the Reagan administration. Cuddy. Well, best get used to it, my friends. This is the first of many heat waves to come. Sam Champion with our forecast next. Also coming up tonight, a cool way to spend the evening here in New York, and it's for free. I'd always been looking for a foreign car just because they look real sporty and I like the image that it portrays. I wanted to get a car which I felt safe in, which I could fit in, and would be a good value for my money. It's my car. It's our Nova. After import car owners add up all the standard features on a new Chevy Nova, then subtract the $1,000 cash they get when they buy one, they generally come to the following conclusion. If you charge car rentals with the gold card, you're fully covered for damage, loss, and theft of the car at no extra charge. A financial benefit from American Express, appreciated by the upwardly mobile. Reason alone to possess the gold card. Convention dictates you can't change travel plans after normal hours. But if you're a Gold Card member, there's American Express Envoy, a 24-hour travel service that lets you fly in the face of convention. Reason alone to possess the Gold Card. The gold necklace, please. Oh, it's a gorgeous piece. I know. I've had my eye on it for quite a while. You know, it's kind of sort of... Oh, please, go ahead. Well, sometimes I think you just have to. When you really want to treat yourself, absolutely nothing makes you feel as good as gold. From Fortune Off. The Durham Bulls were running out of luck. Hey! No! Until a veteran out of the past. Who are you? I'm the player to be named later. And a rookie who's out of control <laughs> met a woman. I think you're real cute. Baby ducks are cute. Who could manage them both. Give me a break. It's true. Kevin Costner. <laughs> Susan Sarandon. <laughs> Bull Durham. Rated R. Starts tomorrow at a theater near you. Check newspapers for showtimes. Abuse at the hands of a babysitter on the next Oprah Winfrey show. Tomorrow at 4, here on Channel 7. The 1988 Honda Civic. To own a car this good, you have to be willing to spend a little less. Well, after this very hot day, this evening was a really good time to take a stroll up Fifth Avenue and what better destination than the city's famed Museum Mile. Mayor Koch was on hand to open the 10th Annual Museum Mile Festival, turning Fifth Avenue from 82nd Street to 104th into a pedestrian mall for the evening. The Guggenheim, the El Museo del Barrio, the Museum of the City of New York, the Jewish Museum and the Cooper Hewitt were among the museums along the 22-block stretch, opening their doors free of charge to the public. And an additional lure for summertime strollers, Free music at each stop along the way, ranging from classical to jazz. All right. Nice tradition. Yep. Stormfield is off. Sam Champion joining us right now. And boy, we're really starting to feel like we're into the summer 
hot weather. It I love like it. Not bad. Yeah, not it's, bad. No, it's warm and, and it is a little humid and sticky out there for some folks. But you know, we're not alone in the heat and some people have it much worse than we do. Witness the plains. The midsection America's heartland. The Secretary of Agriculture says a drought that is plaguing the nation's midsection could become a national disaster. It hasn't rained there in months in some places. Reservoirs and lakes are only at 60% of capacity and fields are scorched and wheat, koi, uh, corn and soybean crops are withering from that. Another problem when there's very little hay and cattle to feed on, it's all burned out and the farmers having to buy it from out west. Prices have doubled on that in recent weeks. The fear is that many farmers could go broke. A bigger fear is that we may be paying a lot more at the supermarket because of this drought. And we'll try to get or show you where the next pattern is of rain that could solve that problem, but it's not a really good one. Relative humidity out there, 42%. Temperature right now still warm at 84 degrees. Barometric pressure 30.19 and rising. The winds are from the west southwest at 7 miles per hour. We'll take a look at what's stirring all this warm air around for us. High pressure exactly right around there in the Carolinas on the east coast has been bridging out this way a whole time. Now remember that air flows around high pressure in a clockwise position, which means this high, as large as it is, is picking up warm air already in Florida. It's bringing it up. It's making it warmer as it drags it across the land. By the time it gets to us, it's had a lot of time to warm up, so it's hot air. Tomorrow, add a little bit more humidity to it. We'll take a look at the big board today's map and find high pressure exactly in that spot, doing everything we just told you and pushing record high temperatures all the way into the northern section of the country. We were just on the edge of that with 99 degrees around Newark. Didn't break a record in the city, but some folks well inland did. This heat will go on again tomorrow, and some folks will see some record temperatures tomorrow. This is the best shot we've got at getting some rain into the plains where they might ease that drought a little bit. But then you see when we actually get to it, all well, the clouds are kind of wimpy. There's not a lot of rain. There's not a lot of moisture to it because this front has been trying to bridge against that high pressure for so long, it's virtually rained out into the Rockies. For tomorrow, though, we'll watch some of those scattered showers move toward that area that needs it so much. Hazy heat continues for us. Another warm day, 96 degrees, add a little bit more humidity. The forecast looks like this for tomorrow. And first thing in the morning, haze and some patchy fog out there. 81 degrees already by 7 in the morning. The rest of the day, hazy sunshine, another warm one. High temperature could be 96, 99 in some places well inland. The five-day plan looks like no relief for us from the heat until about Thursday. But if we can get that relief, it's going to be a beautiful weekend. Oh, terrific. Good Thanks, right, Sam. Sir. Well, big night in sports coming up next year. Corey McFerrin with game four of the NBA playoffs. Also, the Mets and Yankees try to keep up their winning ways. Coming up. Tecate Imported Beer presents Canciones de Mi Padre, Songs of My Father, starring Linda Ronstadt. 18 performances only, July 12th through July 30th. A romantic evening in old Mexico. Linda was fabulous. It was great. Linda was wonderful. Fantastic. At the Minskoff Theater, call Teletron. You're looking at the number one car in owner satisfaction. It's an Acura. Statistics show that an incredible 99.2% of Acura owners would recommend their car to a friend. What about the other 0.8%? Maybe they just have a hard time getting hold of their friends. Acura. Cars for people who know better. Priced from eleven dollars to $30,000. If the earth had been tilted a little more to the left, it probably wouldn't have happened. If the continents had waited a day or two to start drifting, it's doubtful. And if the rain hadn't fallen that day, or the moon hadn't been full, who knows? There might not be a town called Vergez. spring called Perrier. But luckily, everything happened just right. It's perfect. It's Perrier. At Mita, we never stop working on copiers, which is why Mita copiers never seem to stop working. Mita, all we make are great copiers. 
Corey McFerrin with the sports right now. A little bit of a split for the home teams tonight. Yankees yeah. down, the Mets up. Yeah, one up, one down. Yeah. And good news, bad news with the Yankees as well. Good news is Don Mattingly back in the lineup tonight. Finally bangs out three hits. But Boston wins it up at Fenway. It's a romp, in fact. 7-3 final score. Fourth inning, Yanks do take the lead. Briefly trailing 2-1. Jay Buhner takes Mike Smithson downtown. His kid can rip. Two-run shot, 3-2 Yanks. One inning later, this is Wade Boggs. Going to left field, just loves that wall out there. Why not? Off the green monster. Marty Barrett motoring around. Relay coming in. Cut off by Manningly. Throw home safe at the plate. Red Sox would take the lead for good the following inning. Red Sox rip Yankee pitching for 14 hits tonight. Neil Allen gets the loss. Scoreboard tonight, Detroit over Baltimore. Toronto beats Cleveland. The Indians in a bad slump. Minnesota over the White Sox. Milwaukee takes Seattle. Out at Shea Stadium tonight, Mets paying back the Cardinals for that rude treatment they got in St. Louis last week. Mets beat him again. Bobby Ojeda all the way. 5 nothing is the score. And look who's taking in the action. No, that's not a mask. That's him. Former President Richard Nixon and the President had to admire Bobby O tonight. Second complete game. Second shutout of the year. Little defensive help first inning. Lenny Dykstra sprawling grab. That's a man who could care less about his body. Lenny also the offensive star. Singles, doubles, triples. Here's a two-bagger. Second inning, Bernanski cannot make the grab. Drives in Howard Johnson and Kevin Elster. First two runs of the game. Again, 5 nothing. Mets take it tonight. Also, Pittsburgh beats the Cubs. Pirates stay four and a half behind the Mets. Montreal and Philadelphia could be a split as Philly leaves Montreal in game two late. The Reds beat Houston. Dodgers over Atlanta. Well, the NBA Finals, Game 4, the Silver Dome looks like the Pistons will even it up at two games apiece. 93-74, Detroit leads with about five minutes to go in that game. Well, shocking news about John Van Beesbrook. Freak accident at home last night. Falls to a glass table, cuts up his wrist, serious tendon and nerve damage. Could miss as much as the first half of the 88-89 season. Now, we paid a visit to the Beezer's room tonight at the hospital in excellent spirits. Confident he'll regain full momentum ability of his glove hand. Complicating matters, John and his wife expecting their first child any day. Right now, the first concern in our family is to, to have the baby, and hopefully it's going to be healthy. And even though it has a one-armed dad, uh, we'll remember it for the rest of our life. <laughs> and tell the baby to stay off the coffee table, right? That's it. No more glass coffee tables in my house, believe me. Best of luck to John and Rosalind. Two more axes fall in the NHL today. Herb Brooks out at Minnesota. Pierre Kramer fired at Pittsburgh. One of the most courageous athletes you will ever see. University of Michigan star pitcher Jim Abbott, born without a right hand. But it's been no handicap. Angels make him a first-round draft pick two weeks ago. In town today to pick up the Tangeray Amateur Athlete Achievement Award. People support you, but at the same time they have their doubts. and. Um, that's all right with me. I mean, you know, sure, I would have my skepticism, too, if I heard something, you know, that was outlandish to me. It, it's come down to me having to either put up or shut up, and uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to prove it on the field. And believe me, the kid is no gimmick. He is for real. The guy can pitch. You'll see him at the Olympic Games, I think. That's it for us tonight. Okay. Thanks, Corey. Well, that about does it for us. Yes. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. Nightline is coming up next year with Kaidi Tong, Sam Champion, Corey McFerrin, and the rest of the Eyewitness News team. I'm Murdy Anastas. Good night. Everybody wants 9X. 9X for phone systems, 9X for computer systems. Yeah. What's 9X? A gift from heaven? Remember that special feeling called summer?